presentation is going to look at interdependence in the ecosystems. This term comes up lots including tropical rainforests and polar region studies. It is therefore well worth properly getting our head round the term and be able to apply it to these different ecosystems. Before we start to properly investigate interdependence, we need to have a quick recap on some key words. They have been set out on the screen as one side of a revision card, with the first key term being habitat. Habitat means the natural home or environment of a plant or animal, such as a polar bear being found in the Arctic. The next key term we need to know is community. A community means all the living organisms found in an environment. These communities are often displayed in food web diagrams. They are key terms that often come up in science as well as geography. This presentation is going to look specifically at the term interdependent within an ecosystem. It is well worth us therefore writing down what this word means once it is revealed. As you can see, interdependence is when each part of an ecosystem relies on every other part for its survival. Put simply, consumers depend very much upon producers for a source of food and some depend on them for its habitat. The important thing is that all parts are interlinked, so if one part changes, it affects all the other parts that depend upon it. Imagine all the different insects and birds that would be affected if you dug up a tree in your garden. Interdependence in ecosystems looks at the interrelationship between all the key components seen on the screen in the diagram. These are made up of the biotic components, which are all the living plants and animals within an ecosystem, along with the non-living abiotic parts, such as climate and soil within an area. Notice the two-way arrows that connect these key parts of an ecosystem. Some are obvious, such as climate provides moisture to water the plants and drain into soils and rivers, which in turn supports animals. Others are not so straightforward, such as plants and soils providing stores of moisture, which in turn may be transferred back to the atmosphere through evapotranspiration. It'd be well worth making a copy of this basic diagram, including its arrows, before moving on. One of the key species in the Arctic is the polar bear apex predator, as seen on the screen. The polar bear relies on filling up and feasting during the summer months as the ice starts to thin and it can eat its prey such as seals and arctic char. It also scavenges on whatever it can get its paws on with other food sources such as roysenberries, crabs um, and old rodents or dead carcasses. If however there is a change in the numbers of fish due to overfishing or a decline in the number of seals from overhunting then this will directly affect the polar bear's chance of survival because it is interdependent upon these food sources. Furthermore, with climate change and the decreasing amount of abiotic ice available each year then polar bears are going to start to struggle to breed or hunt increasing their steps towards extinction. Here we can see an image on the screen of the landscape in the summer months of a fragile polar ecosystem. Everything depends on everything else. If one part of the ecosystem changes, the others are affected. The cold, dry climate means that biodiversity is generally very low in the Arctic. Changes in climate will affect how the biotic living parts will live or die. Because it's so cold, the plants will grow very slowly and decompose very slowly when they die. This means that the soils receive few nutrients, which in turn reduces plant growth in the future. In the summer, the surface layer of the soils becomes active and melts, allowing plants to grow more. The plants absorb the solar energy from the sun and prevent the permafrost below ground from free melting. The slow melting of the permafrost provides water for the plants. 
We find that many parts are interlinked and reliant upon each other in this fragile polar ecosystem. Slight changes though from overgrazing or climate change can have a massive effect in this area. But also show and make sure you understand the interdependence relationships that are found in the polar Arctic before moving on to look at the areas in the rainforest. The rainforest is another ecosystem where all parts, whether it's climate, soils, water, plants, animals or people, are dependent upon each other. If one element changes, then it will affect all the other elements. We can start by looking at the climate, which is generally very warm and humid. The regular rainfall helps maintain all the ecosystem below, giving it its unique characteristics. The warm, humid climate helps the plants grow quickly. This provides ideal conditions to help with speeding up the nutrient cycle in this area, especially when dead leaf litter is rapidly decomposed. This rotting waste from the trees is broken down, forming humus within the soil, and then the vegetation takes the nutrients from the rotted leaf litter to help it grow. Without the rotted leaf litter, the flora would struggle to grow. The lack of wind by the forest floor has meant that the plants have to become reliant on insects, and bees and butterflies to help pollinate them. This is known as a symbiotic relationship between the plants and animals because they both depend upon each other, a key ingredient for this interdependence. Animals are interdependent upon the rainforest vegetation, which provides it with all its own home and habitat with food source. The animals eat the plants and are then eaten by other animals up the food chain. Animal excretion and the, those dead animals provide valuable nutrients for the forest floor to thrive once again. We will look at this in greater detail in a moment, but first pause the show and ensure you know all about these interrelationships found in the rainforest. On the screen we have a small selection of the jaguar's food chain. All of these elements are interlinked with this apex predator. The jaguar is able to hunt on land and in water, so potentially it has lots on offer. The capybara rodents are reliant on the primary producers of grass and water plants, which themselves grow quickly due to the humid and warm conditions found in the rainforest. The jaguars feed on the capybara herbivores, which are the primary consumers. If there's a drought though, or a change to the wetland habitat, then this could indirectly affect the jaguar. The jaguar also feeds on other creatures within its territory, such as toucans and howler monkeys. The birds and monkeys are examples of secondary consumers, which are in turn reliant on the insects and vegetation growth of the area. Deforestation and hunting have significantly reduced the, the sources of food for the jaguar, threatening them with extinction. All these creatures that you see on the screen are interlinked and interdependent with each other. The interdependent relationships within the rainforest have been in balance for centuries, but there's a great danger that these are becoming broken by mankind. As poachers, for instance, have overhunted some species, such as the jaguar for its pelt, this has an effect on the whole food chain and the food web related to them. With, with less jaguars, for instance, there are more capybaras in the area, but this means that more water lilies will be eaten and so on, as we saw on the last screen. Deforestation, though, is the key thing that's affecting the ecosystem massively. The removal of the trees stops the provision of leaf litter from entering the soil, giving it less nutrients, making it less fertile. The loss of trees disturbs the animal habitats, forcing them to migrate and move to another part of the forest, which in turn causes new conflicts to occur there. The main indirect change due to deforestation can be seen on the screen with the interdependence of rainforest vegetation and climate. The trees provide a natural store of water, having intercepted and captured most of the previous day's rainfall in the canopy. Each day, the warmth would cause this captured rain in the canopy to evaporate and the moisture also from the plants would transpire to give a plentiful source of moisture for rainfall to be created that day. But without the trees below, 
no water would be stored or captured and therefore over time this water would di disappear from the area and less rainfall would occur. The rainforest also acts as a carbon sink, soaking up CO2 from the atmosphere. The removal of the trees breaks this cycle and if the uh, once wooded region is burned then this actually produces more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere causing even greater climate change. Pause the show now and make sure you understand how all these interdependent relationships within the rainforest can easily be affected by mankind. Here we can see a brief overview of interdependence in ecosystems. You should know that each part of the ecosystem relies on every other part for its survival with relationships between the biotic and abiotic parts. Polar interdependence, we found out, is a very fragile ecosystem where small changes to the growing seasons, for instance, can affect everything, especially the interrelationship between the flora and the permafrost. The rainforest, however, has most of the living biomass on Earth where the year-round warmth drives the nutrient and water cycles. The moisture found in these regions is due to the interrelationship between fauna and climate, but these relationships are under threat due to humans. Pause the show to review your understanding of interdependence in ecosystems. Make sure you fully get what all these terms means. This concludes the show. Thank you.